divine happiness, even the tiniest particle of a grain of it, never leaves one again. And when one attains to the essence of things and finds oneself, this is supreme happiness. When it is found, nothing else remains to be found. The sense of want will not awaken any more, and the heart's torment will be stilled forever. Do not be satisfied with fragmentary happiness, which is invariably interrupted by shocks and blows of fate, but become complete and having attained to perfection, be yourself. How many lives are frittered away, age after age, in endless coming and going? Find out who you are. When, by the flood of your tears, the inner and the outer have fused into one, you will find her whom you sought with such anguish, nearer than the nearest, the very breath of life, the very core of every heart. Reality is beyond speech and thought. Only that which can be expressed in words is being said. But what cannot be put into language is indeed that which is. Saints are like trees, they do not call to anyone, neither do they send anyone away. They give shelter to whoever cares to come, be it a man, woman, child or an animal. If you sit under a tree, it will protect you from the weather, from the scorching sun, as well as from the pouring rain. And it will give you flowers and fruit. Whether a human being enjoys them or a bird tastes of them matters little to the tree. Its produce is there for anyone who comes and takes it.
When the mind is full of worldly desires, it is their very nature to confuse the mind. Withdraw the mind from outer things and turn it inwards. Joys and sorrows are time-born and cannot last. Therefore, do not be perturbed by these. The greater the difficulties and obstructions, the more intense will be your endeavour. and the more will your prayer increase from within. And when the time is ripe, you will gain mastery over this power. Widen your shriveled heart. Make the interests of others your own. And serve them as much as you can by sympathy, kindness, presence and so forth. So long as one enjoys the things of this world and has needs and wants. It is necessary to minister to the needs of one's fellow human beings. Otherwise, one cannot be called a human being. Whenever you have the opportunity, give to the poor, feed the hungry, Nurse the sick. Do service as a religious duty. And you will come to know by direct perception that the person served, the one who serves, and the act of service are separate only in appearance. Inquire, who am I? And you will find the answer. Look at a tree. From one seed arises a huge tree. From it comes numerous seeds. Each one of which in its turn grows into a tree. No two fruits are alike. Yet it is one life that throbs in every particle of the tree. So it is the same divine reality everywhere. In whichever direction you may turn your gaze, you will find one eternal, indivisible being manifested. Yet, it is not at all easy to detect this presence, because it interpenetrates everything.
either melt by devotion, the sense of separateness, or burn it by knowledge. For what is it that melts or burns? Only that which by its nature can be melted or burnt, namely the idea that something other than yourself exists. What will happen then? You come to know yourself. I find one vast garden spread out all over the universe. All plants, all human beings, all higher mind bodies are about in this garden in various ways. Each has their own uniqueness and beauty. Their presence and variety give me great delight. Every one of you adds with their special feature to the glory of the garden. It may be asked why there cannot be one and the same path for all. Because that reveals itself in infinite ways and forms. Verily the one is all of them. There is one unchanging, indivisible reality which, though unmanifest, reveals itself in infinite multiplicity and diversity. Those who desire to remain intoxicated by reality do not require artificial intoxicants. Indulging in false things will only increase falsity. Those who desire the truly genuine thing proceed of themselves with great intensity so as to progress in their sadhana. As you love your own body, so regard everyone as equal to your own body. When the supreme experience supervenes, everyone's service is revealed as one's own service. Call it a bird, an insect, an animal, 
or a human. Call it by any name you please. One serves one's own self in every one of them. Single-minded devotion engenders deep thought, which expresses itself in action. The Lord's light descends on the devotee. This power awakens in them, and as a result, profound inner inquiry blossoms forth. The same inexpressible truth is experienced in two ways, as self-luminous silence or as the eternal play of the One. Even afterward, though the dance of creation change around me in the hall of eternity, I shall be the same. In water and on land, in trees, shrubs and creepers, everywhere in the whole universe abides my beloved. Further, all the various forms and modes of being that we behold, are they not expressions of my beloved? For there is none save that. It is smaller than the smallest and greater than the greatest. Let the Divine Word be ever with you, imperceptibly, relentlessly time is creeping away. You must try to discover that state where problems are no longer settled in any particular way. In the course of your life, you have, after careful consideration, come to a decision on many questions, have you not? But now you will have to realise that no solution is ever conclusive. In other words, you will have to go beyond the level where there is certainty and uncertainty. The resolution of a problem arrived at by the mind must of necessity 
be from a particular point of view. Consequently, there will be room for contradiction since your solution represents but one aspect. What then have you actually solved? You will find a complete and final solution of each particular question from its own particular angle of emergence. And you will also find that there is a place where all problems, actual and possible, have but one universal solution in which there is no longer any room left for contradiction. The question of solution or non-solution will then cease to arise. Whether one says yes or no, everything is that. When the mind centers on what gives peace and one's gaze dwells on what promotes it, when one's ears listen to what fills the heart with peace and at all times there is a response from that which is peace itself then only can there be promise of peace. The world is in ceaseless movement and obviously there can be no rest in movement. How could there be peace in perpetual coming and going? Peace reigns where no coming exists and no going, no melting and no burning. Reverse your course advance within towards that. Then there will be hope of peace.